Hello, today we'll be learning about the political development of Imperial China. Today our central question is which method of selecting officials led to the best leaders for China? So we'll think about how leaders got chosen and if it was the right thing for China. Our goal is to evaluate the different methods of selecting officials in Imperial China. So again, we'll have to be able to select the best version of leadership for China and the best method for choosing those leaders. So the first type of leadership is called the aristocracy. This is what this was developed in the Tang Dynasty, which existed from 618 CE to 907 CE. Tang rulers relied on a large bureaucracy, which is a kind of hierarchy. Top down, you have the emperor and then you have state officials. A bureaucracy is a government that is run by those state officials and not elected by the people. Before the Han Dynasty, emperors chose people in the ruling class, people of noble birth. That is called the aristocracy. So this image right here is an example of someone in extravagant clothing because that represents the aristocracy. Here's a little bit more information. Tang emperors used civil service examinations to test qualified candidates for positions in government. However, it was kind of a corrupt system. Early on, aristocrats were chosen for the highest level jobs. Fathers or grandfathers would essentially hand down their high government rank to their sons. Also, you had people who would gain positions through recommendation, like, I recommend this person for this high-ranking government position, or they would marry into an aristocratic family. The second type of leadership group in Imperial China was the meritocracy under the Song Dynasty, which lasted from 960 CE to 1279 CE. Civil service examinations were made more available Originally in the Tang Dynasty, really only aristocrats could take it and afford to go to school. Now there were state-run schools that allowed people of lower classes to start taking this examination, so it became more widespread. This created a meritocracy, which was run by scholar officials. A meritocracy basically means your merit or your worth is determined by your skills. You have to prove it, and this test proved it for the emperor in imperial China. The exams were mostly exams on religion and Confucius teachings. Um, some of the Confucian teachings were put in this book called The Four Books, which had philosophical teachings about Confucius and his philosophy. Song emperors and scholars believed that officials who studied Confucius would be rational, moral, and able to maintain order. They knew what was right from wrong based on Chinese culture and teachings. A new state-supported school allowed lower classes to become scholar officials by studying this information that they wouldn't have access to in any other dynasty. Candidates had to write essays, poems, and answer questions about political and social problems on the actual test. There were only a small amount of people who passed the difficult examinations, and there was a local test. If you passed that, you would go on to the imperial test in the capital of the empire. If you passed that, you would become kind of in this close-knit part of the government in the capital. The last type of leadership group of China was government by foreigners during the period of the Mongol rule. This was called the Yuan Dynasty from 1279 CE to 1368 CE, almost 100 years of Mongol rule in China. The Mongol leader Kublai Khan captured China's imperial capital and took the title of Emperor of China. Mongols then divided society into four classes. Mongols on the top, next were foreign allies, people like Tibetans, Persians, Turks, on occasion Europeans. Third were Northern Chinese 
just because they had more contact and knew the culture of the Mongols a little bit better than the last group, which was on the bottom, the Southern Chinese, mainland Chinese. As you can see, the Mongol Empire expanded rapidly what would have been Chinese territory in a short amount of time. During Kublai Khan's reign, he ended civil service exams because he didn't trust Chinese people to govern themselves and he didn't want them to interfere in his new regime. He gave important, important government positions to trusted Mongols, people within his inner circle, and even within his family to rule. However, Soon, the Mongols couldn't fill the number of positions required to run the government, so they were forced to rely on trusted foreigners, people like their allies, the Tibetans, Persians, Turks, and other Central Asians. However, this system of a Chinese government run by foreigners and Mongols didn't last too long. As time passed, Fighting amongst the Mongol leaders weakened the government, and in 1368, it fell to the Chinese rebel who established the Ming Dynasty.